This piece is from China, from an, a dynasty called the Han Dynasty. It is a funeral banner of Lady Day, or Dai, I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. On the left, you see the full banner, and on the right-hand side, you see a close-up of the center portion. Uh, we're going to get into the basics of content and then spell them out specifically with um, multiple images and slides. And then we'll also do context first. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, this piece is found in a tomb of the woman. And the banner in particular was found on top of the innermost coffin. So there were four, think of them like nesting dolls, um, kind of like what we talked about with King Tutankhamun where you've got one inside another, inside another, and so on. So this is laying directly on that innermost coffin. Now, Lady Day is the wife of a civil servant. So she's very high ranking. He was high ranking. And there were, there were uh, multiple tombs here, um, one for her, her son, and then her husband. Her husband's was in pretty poor condition, and the wife and the son had was pretty undisturbed and you could see all the luxury items within the tomb and get a lot of information about the practices, the funerary practices and so on because of their tombs being relatively um, not disturbed. So in terms of how this banner was used, there's some kind of debate. One uh, group thinks it could have been used to identify the dead. So kind of like a, a name or just a, you know, an image to identify who exactly is buried in the coffin. Uh, others believe it's more kind of like the uh, Last Judgment of Hunifer in a way, kind of a instructional aid or just an aid in general of how to get a soul to um, transport easily into an afterlife. So it could be both as well. Uh, so that's kind of the, the two things that people think this banner functioned as. Um, like King Tutankhamun's tomb, this one was filled with objects needed in the afterlife as well. Um, walking sticks, cushions, uh, food, you know, food items to give to the dead for their journey to the afterlife. So all of that and then the coffin, which you can see in the images here. Uh, and then you can see the banner in the background of the lower image. Um, because of the material, material being silk uh, and paint, we just needed to address the silk road for a moment, which we'll be talking about with various pieces. Uh, it is a trade route, or really more accurately, routes. And there were multiple kind of passages from east to west. It was established during this very time period uh, in China, where you have all types of good tr goods traded. But it's just referenced as the Silk Road because I think silk was one of the primary goods that was traded from the east to the west. And ultimately, the closing of the Silk Road uh, caused the age of exploration in Europe. And that, you know, the closing happened in probably the early middle 1400s. And so that's when you have the the time periods of the conquistadors, you know, going from Spain to the Americas. And that led us to talk about all those um, you know, times in the art of the Americas with those pieces. So I wanted to mention the Silk Road just because of the Han Dynasty and this piece being done in that time period. And during the Han Dynasty also, uh, there's this um, expression of the connection between the human world, the you know, the earthly world, and supernatural worlds. And that can be you know, an underworld and a heavenly realm. You don't just have to think of the supernatural as a heavenly realm. All right, so that pretty much is our context here. Let's move on to basic content. Uh, I like this image because it tells you the different registers and you can see the basic subject of each register. Again, this is painted silk. It's over six feet long, so completely able to cover a coffin with an adult. She was like 50 when she died. Uh, again, four registers. Registers, an oldie but a goodie um, vocab term we've done. 
And the, the reason why this piece, you're studying this one, and it's so important, because it is one of the earliest portraits, maybe the earliest, in Chinese painting. And it's also an example of a more naturalistic approach to art and the figures in Chinese art and Chinese painting in particular. So be sure to know those two things, that's really important. And again, these registers are showing the three different levels of a universe, heaven in the upper, the middle being earth, and the lower portion being the underworld. So breaking apart the, the piece, and just so you can see some of the scenes a little bit more detail, the center earthly portion is where you have on the left that incredibly naturalistic, in comparison with other Chinese art, portrait of Lady Day. She has her walking stick. She has this beautiful pattern work um, robe on. And that's not her in her lifetime. This is her in the afterlife where she's with her servant. So it really gives you the notion that, you know, she's living large here in the afterlife and has all the things, clothing, servants, walking stick, cushions, food, all the things that she would hope to have. Um, on either side of that scene, which you can see on the right, uh, you have dragons framing the scene with their bodies looping through a bee. A bee, B-I. Remember, we talked about that in global prehistory where the jade song, and we talked about the bee, that disc with the hole in the center being a symbol of the sky. So that's what's going on in that very center, and that's that naturalistic portrait, the earliest portrait uh, in Chinese art. And then the lower portion is here, and I've point, tried to point to some things. Uh, in uh, the, the kind of middle of this picture, you have Lady Day participating in funerary rituals with food and wine. Uh, she is actually shown kind of laying under the table where her, she, the pattern is wearing that same pattern on her robe is there as well. And what people point out with this one is there's depth being shown. Bodies overlap, objects overlap, and also objects that are supposed to be closer to us are bigger, and then objects that seem to be farther away are smaller. So this, there's sense kind of like what they did in Roman painting of trying to showcase depth of space. On the bottom most of this picture, you've got some of the underworlds, um, deity and uh, items, symbols, like objects or figures like animals, like two black fish, which I'm pointing to the head of one of them. Uh, snakes are there, and those are red mostly, and goats, and an unknown earthly deity who's there kind of holding up uh, what looks like a platform. And all those animals basically are a symbol of earth and water. That's more of the underworld kind of uh, figures and symbolism going on there. And again, this portion that you're seeing here is the lower part of the whole banner. And then last but not least is the upper banner um, where you have two men at the lower part of this picture. They are the guardians of the gate of heaven. You have some sort of really interesting deity at the top with a human head, and that's what I'm pointing to, and a dragon's body. On the left, you have the moon with a toad, and on the right, you have a three-legged crow with a sun. And those two symbolism, you know, those two symbols represent the supernatural realm beyond our human world. You know, and that's that, again, the Han Dynasty having that sense of the earthly realm, the heavenly realm, and then the underworld realm, all then uh, existing here within this particular banner. So I would say, let's just talk for a moment what we could use for formal quality and function here. Function is definitely funerary absolutely with power and ritual you know the rituals of burial and the ritual of burial for someone who is of high status so absolutely those two things uh, you could also do portrait and in fact i would absolutely do portrait because it's one of the earliest known portraits and a naturalistic portrait in chinese art 
And then the other thing, uh, formal qualities, you could do space. Space being that there are separate registers to show the different areas of the universe, earth, heaven, underworld. Uh, you could do space in terms of depth of space with the attempt to try to show realism with the overlapping figures. I think those things would be um, important. You could do color with red to show power. Um, I think that's plenty with that. So I like this piece a lot. I think it's really beautiful and interesting and just so many visually beautiful imagery, uh, images here and symbols. And so again, this is the funerary banner or funeral banner of Lady Day from China in the Han Dynasty.